Hi everyone, I'm Simon Dodd. I wrote The Race Track Chronicle, A Vader Cadence, and I'm working on a third Battlestar book, but I am also uh, that guy who likes to run the numbers on things, so you've probably seen comparison images I've done on the sizes of various Battlestars and on the caliber of the Galacticus guns and other kind of super nerdy stuff like that uh, that I care about quite a lot uh, because I care about the uh, the integrity and the veracity of the universe, which in Battlestar is uh, very well preserved, um, whether by design uh, or uh, or diligent work by the VFX team. Uh, I'm working on another post, uh, more Galactica, uh, and I thought that this might be a good opportunity to revisit how I did the original scaling of the Valkyrie, uh, which was the first of these images uh, that I created. There's a beat in uh, the Race Track Chronicle where uh, where Maggie and Abigail visit a, a understanding of uh, how big uh, or not uh, these ships are likely to be. Uh, but I don't think I ever really explained how, how we got there to that, so uh, I figured we would go through uh, some of the, uh, the precepts uh, and uh, math of how we got to that. Uh, so the general precept from which I work is that we scale CG ships by looking for one element that exists in the real world and measuring the compare the sizes of all CG ships by looking for common elements and measuring them from there. And the key one uh, that we look for in Battlestar stuff is the size of the Viper launch tubes, uh, which we see on both iterations of the Galactica and on the Valkyrie and on the Pegasus. And the reason why these all have to be the same size, no matter which ship they're on, is because these ships were all in uh, in continuous and contiguous service uh, and uh, using the same fighters. And so whatever Mark Viper uh, they are launching, the Vipers, the new Vipers have to be compatible with the physical launch facilities for the old Vipers, uh, and the new ships have to be compatible with the, uh, with launching the older Vipers as well. And so the upshot is that whatever size the launch tube is on the Galactica, it is also on, give or take, I mean, give or take a few inches here or there, it's the same size as on the Pegasus, the Valkyrie, and so on and so forth. Now, we know... Uh, because we have the original production blueprints, uh, the uh, the size of the of the set dimensions, right? So the shows, uh, the sh all of the shows uh, shot uh, had a launch tube and a hangar bay, uh, and we know from the, these blueprints, these came from Lee Stringer, who was one of the VFX supervisors on the show. Uh, we know how large. Uh, that uh, that door was, and so what size that tube is. And so if you look at the blueprint, you can see that the from the deck to the top of the launch tube is 15 feet even. Okay? So, when we look at the launch tubes on the CG exterior sets, we know that these tubes are 15, give or take, 15 feet tall. Okay? So, now we look at our old friend, the Valkyrie-type Battlestar. Uh, and what's nice, ignore these numbers, by the way, for the time being. We don't care about those just yet, but we are going to circle back to them. So these renders were done by Pierre Drolet, who uh, is the guy who designed uh, the Pegasus. Uh, he also did the, um, he also did the uh, previs for the FTL room, the Assault Raptor, and a bunch of other Battlestar and Caprica stuff. And, you know, I could get lost literally all day <laughs> looking at, at these images. The, uh, these orthographics are just absolutely gorgeous and fascinating. I, I want to know everything about what to the Galacticus uh, uh, flight pods. Uh, I'm, I'm desperate to know about what's going on with these, uh, with these um, what look like thrust reversers uh, behind the engine bells. But what we are interested in for right now <laughs> uh, is the uh, flight pods and specifically the size of the launch tubes. Uh, because, as we just said, we know how tall these launch tubes are, right? The launch tubes on the Galactica are 15 feet tall, therefore these tubes must also be, give or take, 15 feet tall, okay? So, uh, we put on some guides, and we look 
And uh, because it's not a super high resolution image, it would be nice to have this at a lot higher resolution, but this will, this will do. We can uh, take out our old friend the measuring tool, and we can measure the height of the tube in pixels. And what we get is that this, is, this launch tube is 13 pixels tall on, on this, the front orthographic image of the Valkyrie. Uh, now, that means that it 13, 13 pixels equals 15 feet. So one pixel on this front orthographic image is a little over a foot. I mean, to be precise, it's 13.8461 inches, okay? So now what we are going to do is we are going to zoom back out a little bit. Uh, and what do we got with this image of the Valkyrie? What can we compare this tubed height with? Well, what we can do is we can compare it with the overall beam of the Valkyrie, right? So again, we're going to use the measuring tool, and we are going to measure the overall beam of the Valkyrie, exclusive of things like these. You can see the gun turrets here. Uh, if you're in any doubt that those are gun turrets, we can kind of scroll down, and you can see that they are gun turrets that are just kind of sticking out beyond the beam of the ship. And what we find is that the uh, Valkyrie's beam on this image uh, is, uh, what is this? Uh, it is uh, 635 pixels, right? So now that we know that, we can multiply... 13.8461 inches, right, because one pixel is 13.8461 inches. We can multiply that by 635 pixels, and that tells us that the Valkyrie's beam, actual real-world beam, is a little over 732 feet, right, because 13.8461 times 635 is 8,792 inches. So now we've got the beam of the ship. It's 732 feet. So now we take that number and we come to the top orthographic image, uh, which is very interesting because we ha can see both the beam and the overall length of the ship. Uh, now this is a step, this next part is a step that's absolutely crucial and people forget this all the time and it makes me crazy. So we can't just take for granted that this front-facing orthographic, even though it looks about the same, we can't take for granted that it is scaled the same as the top orthographic. So we have to redo a step, right? We have to, on the top orthographic, we have to look at the beam. And we can see that the beam on the top orthographic is 639 pixels, right? Now, we know that the beam of the ship is 732 feet, or 8,792.2735 inches, right? So the scale on the top orthographic is a little different. On this one, one pixel is 13.7594 inches. So it's a slightly different scale. You can't just skip that. You've got to make sure that you're working, uh, that you're comparing like with like at every step. And so now, finally, we can get to the Valkyrie's overall length. And you can see that there are actually different places where you could measure this, right? Because... Uh, at the bow, you have what I would assume is you know frame frame one, or you know frame whatever if it's if the frames are ordered from the stern, and then you have these uh, you have the bow right here, and you have these antennae, right? You got twin antennae at the front, and then you also have this kind of section here that I guess could be frame zero. It depends how you want to think about it. Uh, and so you kind of have to pick which of these is going to be your, your marker. Uh, I am going to exclude the antennae, but include these kind of pylons that project forward a little bit from, uh, from the bow true, uh, because that's what I did on the Galactica when we were measuring that, right? So uh, the, the, the very forward part of the Galactica, uh, as I've measured it, doesn't include like antennae that stick out of the bow, uh, but including these little pylons because they're part of the overall structure, uh, I feel like that those should be included. So my line is right here, right? So that's the front. Now at the back, do you include these thrust reversers? Do you include the engine bells? 
uh, or whatever these are, thrust directors, I, I, I don't know. This one is a much harder call for me. Uh, I, I feel like to be completely consistent with the Galactica, we probably ought to just include the engine bells. Uh, but I'm going to include the thrust reversers because it's not really clear to me what they are and what function. I say I'm, I'm guessing that they are some kind of thrust direction fin, but who knows, right? So our line is going to go from the very back to this medium position here at the end of the pylons, but before the antennae. And that gives us 1,788 pixels, okay? Uh, so, because we know the scaling on this top orthographic, we know that one pixel is about 13 inches, we just have to multiply 1,788 by 13.7594, and that'll tell us the Valkyrie's actual length, right? So it's 24,604.8072 inches. Well, that is to say about 2,050 and a half feet, or 624.96 meters. So that is the actual canonical length of the Battlestar Valkyrie, because canon is not just what is said, it is what is shown. Uh, and we uh, can trace from the blueprints of the set, it's 15 feet, 15 feet on the tubes here, and then we can uh, get to 732 foot beam based on the same image, then we can transfer that over and get to um, uh, 624 meters. Uh, and so then we can stick uh, that into a comparison chart. Uh, the Galactica, as I addressed in my original post, using the same methodology, if you look at the, uh, the launch tubes on the exterior CG model, uh, this is one that Mojo rendered uh, a couple of years ago from the original uh, model. Uh, so just as you know, the, the, these is uh, these are as close as you're going to get to Canon images. They're not Canon, but Pierre Drolet designed the freaking Valkyrie, so I'm inclined to credit his uh, his model here. Uh, you know, Mojo didn't design the Galactica, but this is uh, he worked on the show extensively. This is his render of the of the production model, and so I I think this is as close as we're going to get at anything like high resolution. And so we can then stick uh, the Galactica, which is 1,333 meters long, uh, into scale with how big they are by comparison to uh, the uh, USS Enterprise uh, uh, or uh, the, the uh, uh, what was it called, the Seawise Giant, I think it was before it was the Noc Nevis, you know, an in absolutely enormous oil tank and you know you can see if we uh, move this over the top of it so the knock nevis you know, exclusive of you know the engineering section uh, the Valkyrie is the size of the knock nevis I mean it, it is a really 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 large ship by comparison to anything uh, that, uh, that we operate on Earth, uh, but it by itself pales by comparison to the Galactica, which is, of, of course, a much larger... And by the way, we can infer things about the function of the, of the ship, right? So not only uh, can we infer from the number of tubes it has and from the number of guns and so on, but also just from the size, uh, things about the rough complement, uh, what is the role of a ship this size? And so you can say, well, this has got to be an escort carrier, which you know, we kind of already knew, uh, but, uh, but th that kind of confirms that intuition uh, just by comparing it to the size of the Galactica. And of course, by comparison to the Pegasus, you can see they're both uh, much, much smaller. Uh, the Pegasus really is a, a, a total monster of a ship, um, uh, which again scaled here the same way by using the uh, the the, the uh, launch tubes. Uh, so that uh, these are 15 feet. Each of these little three pixel tall tubes uh, is 15 feet tall, and so we end up with the same scale on this and the same scale that you can't see it on uh, the on the Valkyrie. Uh, I did mention, just to close out, uh, I said ignore the numbers, but you'll notice that uh, 
Pierre Drolet's numbers on this image that he created gives the uh, the Valkyrie's overall length at 649 meters. Uh, we've calculated it just a little bit shorter than that, 624 meters. Um, you know, there, there, there's a, there's a little bit of variance in that from uh, from excluding the antennae. Uh, the uh, the antennae probably add you know a few meters to that, um, and the uh, the uh, the the beam also is uh, just a little bit different. Um, partly, I would say that is because the uh, the resolution of the image is just too low to be really super confident. So all of these numbers you got to take with a grain of salt. Um, but also partly because I don't know how he uh, how he uh, calculated that and how precise we are supposed to take it. Uh, but anyway, that's the approach that I use in scaling uh, ships. Uh, the same thing was also true with the Galacticus guns. You can't see it at the resolution that I have this image, uh, but we can, uh, on this image and others, compare the diameter of the launch tubes with the, uh, with the um, caliber of the guns and make some educated guesses about, uh, about the caliber and so the number of munitions that the Galactica can store and so on. Um, but anyway, that is, uh, all that is, I suppose, a prelude to uh, returning to the, uh, t to the TOS Galactica, which I'm uh, planning on doing in a post, hopefully, to be out this weekend. But I just wanted to cover uh, what, what it is that I'm doing to get these numbers uh, and why I'm pretty confident in, about them and you know, to some extent a little bit ornery about defending those numbers uh, uh, even against people who come in and have, uh, have uh, different numbers uh, in which they are also confident. Uh, I, I think that we can be confident to, to within a, a relatively good degree of uh, certainty about these numbers because they are based on real physical objects that we can measure rather than just guesswork and things that sound nice. And there's a bit of fudge in it because, again, precise measurements, but it's really pretty close, and the fact that it is very congruent with this number that... Uh, that anyway, that's all for now.